Creative Katie, Karen Virtual here. Welcome to a napkin journal tutorial. This is part of my napkin journal series. The napkins have been supplied to me by Nini's Napkins. Check out the description box for a discount code. So I'm using this beautiful napkin and this was one of the first ones that I picked when Nini, Nicole and I decided to do a collaboration. I absolutely love these poppies and there are four equal quadrants and we're going to use these poppies as the focal image on our art journal page but instead of just gluing it onto the background we are doing an intermediate step and I'm going to glue this napkin down onto an old dictionary page. You can put it on a music page um, any kind of book page. So before I do that, I am just removing parts of it that I don't want. Now see that fern? That comes back and, and the colors because I'm also going to be using the color scheme that were given in this napkin when I make my choices for further steps. So it's great practice if you're not sure how colors work, build on what the designer of the napkin has already done. So I just want to get rid of the straight edges. So I'm just using water on a brush. Now I know you can see a lot of people use a water brush. I don't have very much luck with a water brush. I have much better luck with a fine brush and just dipping it in water a little bit. Slow and steady is the case here. I just want rough edges. I don't want anything looking too pristine. I'm going for kind of the junk journal kind of look, even though I'm not doing a junk journal. I didn't have to get rid of more of this here, but again, I am learning as I go. And I'm just past taking you along for the ride. So I'm just removing it, putting that on. Now you can take your napkins and spend a day building your stash and putting a whole bunch onto a book paper. If you were doing a junk journal, I would totally do that to have lots on hand and have that step done. Today I'm just doing it right as part of my art journal process, but this is something you can do in a separate thing if you don't have an extended period of time to art journal. I put a coat of liquid matte medium. My The brand I use is Liquitex. There's also a Liquitex Basics brand that I can't find any difference between the two. So go with whatever is cheaper. Both work equally well from what I can tell. And then I'm putting a coat on top. Now the napkins, when it dries, you get some texture and it's not like when you put tissue paper on a background when you use that art journaling. It's a little bit different, but it's absolutely lovely. I love how the napkin, it kind of crinkles and gives it that old world look and feel to it. So I'm very, very happy with how that turned out. And now I come to the part where I spend an embarrassingly long amount of time. I rip this apart. I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to just use these. Three is a good number of poppies. I'm ripping off, getting more, getting rid of any straight edges. But I really have no plan. Other than putting it on to the dictionary paper, that's where my plan ended. So now I'm thinking, okay, where do I want this? And then I have to decide on the background. So I'm thinking, you know what? I'm gonna flip through my gel prints. Remember, we have our stash, we should be using it. And I find this gel print, 
It's not a particularly lovely one, but it totally matches the color. It's kind of that yellow orange of the poppy. It has a little bit of the dark blue in it that matches the center of the poppy. And there's that yellow green in it or yellow that's working all together. And I just grab out my gel prints and I try it on there. And then that's how I found this one. And now I am playing with the composition of this. And as I said, this took me an awfully long time. I've gone, I've sped up this part of the video. I think I even edited some of it out, but I want to be completely honest with you. And the reason it took me a lot of time is this isn't normally what I do. And when you're doing something the first time or out of your comfort zone, expect it to take a little bit longer. So after much dilemmas, I look at that yellow green and I'm using Naples yellow and Hooker's green and covering the background by applying the paint with a makeup sponge. Now this surface is not gessoed. And I know a lot of it's going to be covered. So I'm not worried about it being inconsistent. Then I grab this Ferns stencil, which is new to me from the Crafters Workshop, and I'll put a link to it and any other special supplies in the description box below. Thank you for shopping through any of my affiliate links. And I'm turning this stencil and just layering these ferns underneath. Now, the idea for this fern came from the napkin itself. In that one little corner, remember at the beginning, I cut out that fern. But I figure, okay, so if the artist of this napkin put the fern in there and that green, it gave me the idea. And I'm just layering these with the hooker's green. And it's absolutely lovely. just looks like a lush forest. Like if we were walking on Vancouver Island, you can have all these ferns are growing wild. So now I'm back to playing with the composition of this. And I'm very uncertain, again, because this is new. And then I tell myself, you know what? Just do it. Push through experiment. If it works, great. If it doesn't, that's okay too. So holding everything in place, I start gluing down the under layers first, and then I put a coat of the liquid matte medium on top. Now at this point, while everything's working, it doesn't look like it all belongs together. And that is often the situation at this stage. You haven't done any of the finishing. None of the shading has been done, the splattering, the little details that really take the page to the next level. So if your pages are all, oh, they're okay, but it seemed like they're missing something, pay attention to these next steps because that could be what's missing. Now, I'm uncertain, and so when I'm uncertain, I shade around the page. I edge the page, and I'm using the floating acrylic technique, black paint, angle brush, just to frame the page. 99.9% .9 of the time I do this. And that just gives me a different perspective on it and it's starting that finishing process. It also gives me think time to look at the page and ponder and think about what I want to do. If you're enjoying these napkin journals and would like to see more, leave that comment in the comment section. I'm trying to figure out how many of these I should be doing they will be a regular series. 
Now, I decided that I needed to introduce some of that red into the background. And I'm just watering it down and touching it in certain places. I get a little heavy-handed and come back and wipe it back with a baby wipe. But it just introduces that little bit of red elsewhere. And it makes me just a little bit happier. Now I grab my General's Charcoal Pencil. This one's soft or extra soft. And I'm going to shade around, outline and smudge around all my elements. And here's where it really started to work together. Now, if I was junk journaling, I probably would have taken an ink and inked off the edges a little bit. And I, you could do that as well. Now I grab my General's charcoal pencil. Now this one is medium or hard, and it doesn't smudge as easily, and give, but it gives a really nice black line. Not as pristine as what a Sharpie would do, which I like. And you can just see from that one poppy to the next to the next, the difference this step makes. It really, bumps it up, but this is making this your own and making all the elements on the page work together. The shading around the outside edge, the shading around the torn papers. Everything now is starting to really work together. We're making it with all these little things, we're making everything look like it belongs together. And now I'm going around the outside edge again with the soft General's charcoal pencil. And some of that I'm getting on top of the gel print and some of it I'm getting on the green part. So any hesitation I had earlier about, oh, I don't know if this is really working, dissipate it once I've got and added all these finishing touches, this shading. Now I'm going back and adding a little more around the edges with the charcoal pencil. If I was varnishing this because I've used charcoal, I need to spray it with a fixative before I do any wet varnishing. I don't varnish my art journal pages, so I'm not going to do that step. But if this was on a canvas, or on a card, I would spray it with um, a fixative. I think this would make a lovely card done, you know, exactly the same way. And I might actually do that. Now, my background still seemed a little bit flat. So, and so I needed to add a little more interest. So I'm taking a script stamp and just stamping around. Yes, this would have been easier if I had done it before I glued everything down, but it's not impossible to do now. Sometimes you don't know it needs something until later. Now I want to splatter it with gold because we need a little bit of bling. These colors are not my typical colors. I don't use green as by itself very often and I rarely use red as it by itself either. So that was a stretch. Now I have these four words that I cut out with my silhouette and it is using a Japanese font and I don't know right from the beginning I was thinking oriental maybe oriental poppy was going through my head or Japanese fern. So that kind of is why I chose to grab this these words. And I'm just using a makeup sponge and black paint. Thank you so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Here's some close-ups. This one, you can really see that book paper and a little bit of that texture that I was talking about. I absolutely love this. Thanks again, and we'll see you for the next tutorial. Be sure to subscribe.